Behind the doors of this industrial unit in Bristol could be the future of military aviation. Meet Eralis, the world's first modular military jet, an aircraft this startup company hope will be flying with the RAF within this decade. So I'll start with the cockpit. This is the cockpit uh, where you have a, a seat in the front and in the back. And this module can come out and we can have the uncrewed module replace the cockpit so the aircraft can be uncrewed. The wings are clearly modular, so th here we have an advanced jet trainer wing uh, that can uh, come off and be replaced by a different kind of wing. And on the other side we have the ISR wing, the Information Surveillance and Reconnaissance wing. Back of the, uh, the fuselage here, we can make longer and shorter to make the aircraft uh, carry more fuel or less fuel. And underneath the aeroplane, probably the most critical element is the engine nacelle here. So we have the ability to either fit one engine or two engines, depending on how much thrust the aircraft needs to have. Airlines have used this modular system for decades, but this is the first time it's been attempted with a military jet. Aralis want this to be the RAF's next training aircraft, a replacement for the Hawk, but it could also be reconfigured to do other jobs too. For us, the, the, the practical way of doing that um, is leveraging the commercial market to effectively say, uh, let's have a private company that takes care of owning the aircraft and reconfiguring it to, and deploying that on behalf of the military customer and then the customer uses whatever they want from that, from that service. In that case you can imagine the commercial company having for example a fleet of uh, pre-configured aeroplanes, some are advanced jet trainers, some are aggressors, some are tankers, some are uh, ISR aeroplanes and uh, the starting point is not to reconfigure them every day, but to have that fleet available. The MOD's invested £9 million into Aralis and the RAF is supporting the development of the avionics. And it's that internal part of the design where the real wizardry happens. Because along with the wings and engines, this jet can also change its flight systems, making it operate and feel just like another aircraft. That, says the company, could radically change the way pilots of the future are trained and save vast amounts of taxpayers' money. In charge of sales is Archie Neal, a former RAF flying instructor. On Typhoon, um, you have 10 buttons on the stick and 12 buttons on the throttle. So those 22 buttons have about 100 different functions that you use to, to manage the 80 avionics computers down the back. And it's a bit like learning to play the saxophone whilst driving a Formula One uh, racing car. And the problem is when you change one of those avionics boxes or put a new weapon on board, you squirt some new software into the system, which changes the notes. So you have to learn a new saxophone whilst flying the aircraft like a Formula One uh, vehicle. What we can do with this aircraft is we can configure the cockpit to have those 22 buttons like a Typhoon or the F-35 equivalent. So you can be flying essentially a Typhoon cockpit. Okay, it hasn't got the thrust, you're never going to replicate the, the thrust of the, you know, the prancing Mustang pony that is a typhoon, mm -hmm. uh, but you can develop the motor skills in the airborne environment. The RAF currently has a backlog of trainee pilots, many waiting long periods to start flying. Iralis say this could provide a solution. So the really exciting thing about this for me is that you could be streaming the pilots to go F-35, typhoon or whatever much earlier in the system on computer games so that when they arrive at RAF Valley to fly their first you know, fighter and trainer, Aralis, they can be in a Typhoon cockpit or an F-35 cockpit learning the motor skills right up front and going through the training system without all the inefficiencies that you currently have in the training pipeline. Aralis are collaborating with 16 British firms including big names like Rolls-Royce and Air Tanker and Qatari investors have injected £10.5 million. With the RAF aiming to be net zero by 2040, it's also green. It'll be built from sustainable materials and will run on synthetic fuel. They hope to sell this worldwide and eventually have their plane performing with a certain aerobatic team. So the Red Arrows uh, visited us at Riyadh and we're happy to be photographed uh, with the backdrop and uh, Chief of the Air Staff is supportive. Um, um, so uh, uh, it's, it's a question now of uh, uh, working with the Air Force and the MOD to prepare for what's going to replace the Hawk T-1. Iralis say they expect to have this jet flying by the middle of the decade and take it to market in 2028. If all goes to plan, it will be the first entirely British-built crewed military jet since the 1970s. The start say it's makers of a new era in fast jet design. Simon Newton, Forces News, Bristol.
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.